congratulations, you played yourself. All right, hey, what's up, guys? It's the Nightwing at Way of Life Esports coming at you guys with another League of Legends video here to talk about the LEC Spring Split 2020 playoffs rounds four and five. So Last week, we were treated to such amazing games out of the LEC, Mad Lions upsetting G2, and if you told me that they would have done that previously, I would have been, you're pretty crazy. But it ended up not happening that way, and then you also had Origin getting completely steamrolled by Fnatic. It was not even close how hard they got steamrolled. Now, they did make a comeback in Game 3, and then almost... We're going to surely win in game four, but they ended up throwing a lead upset and ended up getting caught out. And then right after that, pretty much Fnatic do what they do best. They get a Baron and then Whipple starts to split push and then they obviously win after that. So looking at what uh, Origin need to do to win in order to beat Rogue is because Rogue ended up beating Misfits and Misfits were a team that Rogue should have lost to. All things considered, Misfits did look better. Now, Alfari versus Finn, that's pretty even. I think that Alfari's been a pretty great top laner, so, uh, but Finn has also been pretty weak, but from last week, what we saw out of Finn, Finn can almost handle Alfari, but it just depends on which matchup he actually is given. Xerxe versus Inspired, I think that Inspired uh, has the favored matchup. I think that Xerxe still isn't really what Origin need, but, I mean, he has been an upgrade over Cold from last year. And I think that a lot of Origin's problems are coming from Xerxes. You know what I mean? There are certain games where he's just either invisible or he's just doing pretty much the average. And that's not what you expected coming into this year for Origin. They needed a carry jungler, I personally think, to mold well with Nuke Duck or Alfari, or they needed a serviceable ex Smithy type jungler where it's just something that the, the, that the laners overall need to a certain point so that they could get through a certain phase in the game. I think that Nuke Duck versus uh, Larson isn't going to be too favored into either of them. Larson, I think, could overtake Nuke Duck if he's given the right matchup, personally. I think that Nuke Duck is the better player outside of Lading Phase, but it just depends on what curveballs Origin are going to throw and vice versa for Rogue. I think a lot of these matchups are pretty even across the board. Hansama versus Upset. You have a battle of two great ADCs from EU. Upset proved last week, even when Origin were losing, that he can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best. Now, being paired with Destiny, and we have not seen this oceanic player experiment go too well. Shurnfire really didn't work out on TL. I mean, you had, uh, I mean, King is on uh, Cloud9. He's doing pretty well. Outside of that, uh, you have Destiny on Origin. That's looked okay, but I mean, I think this oceanic player experiment hasn't really gone too, too well. You had Lost from Echo Fox last year. I'm, I mean, I, I think he personally sucked. I thought he sucked in Oceanic when I was even watching it, so that'll tell you something. But uh, FBI on, on Golden Guardians has looked okay. So I think trying out these oceanic players, I mean, at some point, we have to give them a shot. They are pro players, and, you know, if you want them to get better, we got to eventually try them out, right? I think Upset and Destiny are not a bad bot lane, but I think that Upset is severely always outclassing Destiny in terms of how they want to play the game. Now, looking at Hot Summer and Vander, I think they get the edge because Vander is a better support than Destiny. Now, uh, Hot Sama, I think, is champion dependent, while I think that Destiny has champion pool issues. What I'm saying is, uh, I've only really seen Destiny play like Thresher and Nautilus. I mean, and he really barely excels on either of those two picks. Uh, Hot Sama, vice versa, only really excels on Draven and Lucian. While on other picks, he kind of struggles. Vander kind of struggles on things that are uh, Enchanter supports, while Destiny kind of plays the playmaking supports a tiny bit better depending on the skirmish you're going for. Now, I'm going to say Origin win 3-2. to two. I think that Origin will come away a lot stronger in this best of five against Rogue. And in this best of five against Rogue, I think that they'll be able to overcome them. I think their uh, veteranship should be able to get them past. But I also think that Rogue will benefit from the online gameplay right now because of how strong they played last week. I think this series will go the distance. I think this will be a series like TSM versus 100 Thieves where it's uh, one where like maybe... 
uh, it's going to be uh, Rogue winning game one, Origin winning two games straight, then Rogue bouncing back and winning game, and then game five, I think Origin will actually win. So yeah, I'm going to have that be Origin versus Rogue. Origin wins three to two. Then you have Fnatic versus Mad Lions, and Mad Lions probably didn't even think they would even be in this spot facing Fnatic, but you even heard uh, Carsey say on the crackdown that he actually anticipated himself, you know, being on facing Fnatic, and looking at how both teams played, I still think that Bwipple has the edge against Arome, and I think that Selfmade and Shadow are pretty even, so I think the tide in the match will tip depending on where Selfmade goes to gank. Will he go to gank for Nemesis, or will he go to gank for Bwipple, and how will he actually outpath Shadow? Now, Looking at a really good strength for the bot lane in either team is going to be Fnatics because Fnatics has Reckless and Hillisang. Karzi and Kayser, I think, are still a little bit more weaker than Reckless and Hillisang. Reckless has proved that he still is the best ADC in EU this split. And Hillisang, despite being sometimes a dirty inter, doesn't matter. I think he's still better than Kayser. But I think that Karzi can match Reckless if it if he's given the correct champion that he can excel on. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So, like... You also have Nemesis versus Humanoid, and it really depends. Uh, I think that Nemesis is just better overall from what we've been shown all this time. And I think that once we've seen uh, all that we can see from Mad Lions, I think, I'm not trying to sound salty, but I think their luck is going to run out. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of these teams sometimes in these playoffs will get these random big giant upsets. Credit to them, obviously. But sometimes... It's only just that. It's just in the moment to get the upset. And then uh, once Fnatic win, then you start to remember why Mad Lions were struggling early on in the split. Why they had all these issues. Now, if they win this series, then obviously I'll eat my words. But it, this happens a lot. Where, like, um, I can't re really remember. It's, um, remember when G2 upset RNG? People just forgot how strong RNG were that year. Specifically outside of IG. That's how I remember, personally. But... To be fair, before G2 upset RNG, people were looking at RNG as, like, the best team in the world. You know what I'm saying? That's how I want you guys to project this series together, is when you're thinking about it, is just because one team got an upset doesn't take away the other issues that team already had. Like, if you've watched LCS for years like I have, remember when Cloud9 faced Dignitas back in the 2017 Summer Split and Cloud9 2-0 Dignitas in that 2017 spring split, this is when it was best of threes, and then Dignitas upset Cloud9 in that series, and a lot of people were like, well, Cloud9, you got upset, you know, they're like, oh my god, Cloud9 got upset, next week, TSM plays Dignitas, they destroy them, now, now you realize how many issues they actually had, and what Cloud9 wasn't punishing, so that's why, I w that's what I want you guys to look at going into the series, is that, did Mad Lions get an uh, upset off of G2 playing really poorly, or did they get that upset by just outplaying them? The way Fnatic beat them will show you if Mad Lions are as good as most people say they are now from beating G2. But that's it, guys. Uh, I predict Origin to beat Rogue 3-2, and I predict Fnatic to beat Mad Lions 3-1. I think the luck for them is already run out, and I think Fnatic will show why they should not have been in the spot, and it should have been G2 facing Fnatic. But that's it, guys. See you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe. Most of all, enjoy. I'm the Nightwing, and Way of Life Esports is signing out. Um, Make sure you join the Discord in the description box below if you ever want to uh, get on a podcast with me, and we'll just talk about some Lee, talk about your history, talk about your origin. Join the Discord in the description box below. Let's grow this thing and let's get bigger, guys. I'm an, and I'll see you guys later. Uh, tonight I don't think I have any any more videos posted unless I start VOD reviewing. And I kind I really really want to start VOD reviewing, man. I really really do. Um, nope, I have no more videos set for the channel. Oh, I I have my uh playoff recap from FlyQuest GG Hunter Thieves TSM. I'll do that later on. But yeah, see you guys later. Bye. Have a good day and hope you guys have a great weekend, great night. And uh, peace out. Goodbye. Hi, you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more stuff. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>